Good afternoon. Welcome to Midcap Radar. I'm Sona Bhutra. With me as always is Vivek Ayer. Uh, there's some more recovery from the lows on the Nifty, but the Midcaps, they continue to suck. But nevertheless, it was down around 500 points at a point in time. The Midcap index even more than that. Right. So it's down 400 now and we'll have to see which way things go from here. Uh, just 15 minutes ago, you know, mm -hmm. both uh, Midcap small cap index were down over a percent. So quite a bit of yes. recovery there and the large cap uh, that's doing quite well in sharp recovery there in the capital goods space, especially seeing quite a bit of recovery. But quite a lot lined up on the show. Let's start off with the top headlines. Stock slip after a steady open as concerns over slowing earnings growth and uncertainty over Trump 2.0 linger, even as the US Fed delivers another rate cut. Oil and gas, along with PSU banks and realty, are the big drags. IT, FMCG, and consumer durables eke out gains mid caps under pressure. ITI shares rally after its consortium emerges as the lowest bidder for a 3,000 crore Bharat Net project. The stock is up 12%. Page Industry shares surge in trade following a couple of brokerage upgrades from Motilal Oswal and IIFL following its Q2 results. Motilal Oswal has a target price of 54,000 rupees on the stock. Railway PSUs, RVNL and Irkon fall in trade following a subdued set of quarter 2 earnings. RVNL's margin declines nearly 50 basis points, while its EBITDA falls 9%, while Ilkhan's EBITDA falls 23% on a YY basis. GMM Fordler down nearly 7% after reporting a weak set of numbers in the second quarter. EBITDA comes in lower by 35%, while margin falls to 11.5% versus 15% on a year-on-year -year basis. Okay, all right. Those are the top headlines that we are tracking for you. But of course, the big breaking news that has come by is China has approved local government debt swap plan. We'll need more details on this one. Uh, we are getting in more information coming in. But that was something that we had been watching out very closely as well. Uh, because uh, in terms of any stimulus, in terms of any commentary on what's happening with the economy is something that the entire global markets have been watching out for. The metals index, remember, ahead of this NPC briefing was down 1%. So how is that one doing right now is something we'll be tracking very closely. For now, these are the basic flashes that we have. And uh, the point is that there more is an details, approval of yes. local government debt swap plan. But I don't think there are any more details no that details, we have yes, as yes, of yes, now. That's right. That's right. Uh, uh, we'll take a quick check as far as the metal space is concerned, the Nifty Metal Index. Uh, look at names like Tata Steel, JSPL, Sale. You know, those stocks have been under pressure since morning. Uh, it'll be interesting to see whether there's been any reaction over there. But as of now, the only details that we have is that China has approved a local debt swap plan. Uh, but we'll come back to this particular breaking news in a bit. Uh, this is our special segment, Mid-Cap Mover. Hosmer is at the wall to take us to the mid-caps that are moving around in the session. Counting down to SBI results, but the broader markets are underperformers in today's trading session. And start off with some of the losers then in the broader markets, and they include the likes of Suzlon and the likes that are underperforming in today's trading session within the broader market space. Suzlon down 5.5%, Aarti Industries ahead of results. And oil sensitives are facing some pressure in today's session, like HPCL and Oil India. A lot of PSUs reported results today, most of them witnessing some margin compression compared to the same period last year. And it's showing up in the stock price today, be it RVNL, Cochin, Shipyard, Ircon, all of them witnessed margin pressure. Although some are recovering from the lows, still trading with losses of anywhere between 2 to 5%. Some other stocks that are doing well on the back of strong volumes in today's session. But though before that, some stocks that are at a 52-week high in today's session. Indian Hotels is at a record high. Page Industries is at a 52-week high. And Vijaya Diagnostics too, making a new 52-week high in today's trading session. And stocks that are doing well on the back of strong volumes. ITI after an order win. Inox Industries and TBO Tech too are seeing some strong gains on the back of very strong volumes. Okay, all right. Thank you so much for joining in, uh, as always, Hormaz. Uh, let's welcome Himeen Kapadia from KR Choki Securities for a quick technical check on the markets. Himeen, good afternoon. Uh, when, can you quickly tell us what are the important levels to watch out for on the Nifty? Very good afternoon. Thank you for having me. 11 trading sessions. The range is between 23,800 and 24,500. If we need to progress, we need a close about 24,500 till then. We're going nowhere, Sonal. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Heyman, you know, for taking us through the levels of the Nifty, given the volatile nature of the market. We'll skip the individual stock calls today. Uh, but moving on, uh, as we slip into a short break, some exciting news for our viewers. Seize the opportunity to attend India's landmark economic summit, show you 
show us that you are a true CNBC TV18 fan by answering a simple question in our super fan contest. Head over to CNBC TV18 social media channels to participate and get a chance to win a free ticket to the CNBC TV18 Global Leadership Summit. Hurry, contest ends on 10th November 2024. Answer now and you could be one of the five lucky winners. Welcome back. You're still tuned into Midcap Radar and SBI's numbers, they are trickling in. The NII has come in at 41,620 crore rupees, which is absolutely in line with the poll of 41,623 crore rupees, if I got the number correct. The net profit is higher than the poll, 18,331 crore rupees. That compares with the number that we had of 15,426 crore rupees. So it's a higher profit number that we are looking at for SBI. The stock has recovered sharply from the lows of the day as well. We'll have to see uh, uh, what the internals are like. It'll be very important to, uh, to look at that, the detailed number. Uh, do remember that this time around, the expectation was that the deposits growth will be lower than the system on a YOY basis. And advances growth is expected to remain healthy, where Motila Loswal is estimating advances growth of around 15.8% on a YY basis and 3.5% on a sequential basis. The gross NP has improved on a sequential basis to come at 2.13%, which compares with a number of 2.21%. So, so far, it has been better than what the street was working with in terms of profitability. NII is absolutely in line with estimates and gross NP, the asset quality, has improved on a sequential basis as well. In fact, we have uh, Nyanad Vaidya of Access Securities joining us on the phone line now to get his first reaction and then we'll get, get in Abhishek as well with his take on the numbers. Mr. Vaidya, thank you much for joining in. Well, uh, Ms. Vaidya, sorry. Uh, we have the first initial numbers. Uh, what you made, the profit number is a beat. The asset quality has improved. NII is largely in line with estimates. Right. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, the numbers for NII seems to be in line, uh, driven by possibly a, a delivery on expected lines in terms of credit growth, about 15, 16 odd percent. Uh, margins, we expected to contract marginally by around five basis points, and that could possibly be in line. The beat is uh, mainly on uh, non interest income, which seems to have come ahead of our expectations, and that has resulted in a beat on the pop. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I cannot see the credit cost numbers, but PAT numbers uh, seem to be uh, ahead of our expectations. So it's, overall, okay. it's a good set of numbers. Um, but uh, on, in, even in terms of asset quality, the bank has delivered a good performance with a sequential improvement. Uh, yeah. Slippage's number is something that we would want to see. Uh, as pointed out by you, the provisions have declined on a sequential basis on the NPA front. So, annualized credit cost has come in at 0.38% when compared to 0.48% in the previous quarter. One of the lowest annualized credit costs that you are seeing in the banking sector, given the fact that there are discussions going on uh, with respect to unsecured credit coming in for, uh, you know, becoming NPA in this quarter. Now, operationally, it's a strong quarter, 50.9% you know, YOY growth on operating profits and about 10.8% uh, on a sequential basis. The NI largely in line with what our poll had suggested. The other income has grown robustly. So the other income has come in at 15,271 crore, which is a growth of 41.5% YOY and about 36.8% sequentially. Remember that you know Treasury income has been very strong for SBI over the last few quarters that I've seen. Over 2,000 crore quarterly run rate they have been able to sustain. So uh, it might be that Treasury gains is uh, good over here. Uh, the OPEX has declined about 10.5% YOY, which is heartening to see the employee expenses that's aided the, uh, you know, cut in uh, OPEX. So, employee expenses are down 21.8% YOY and about 4.3% uh, sequentially. Hence, the operating profit growth is really good. The uh, credit cost is on the lower side and they have reported nearly 19% more profits than our poll on account of two key factors. The other income, a uh, lower OPEX asset quality has improved in absolute value. Gross NPA is down 1%. Net NPA is down about 6% on a sequential basis, which suggests that their PCR or provision coverage ratio might and we can also see from these numbers that slippages might have reduced on a sequential basis because provision for NPA is down. So slippages might have declined on 
Coming on to the business momentum, deposit growth on a sequential basis is very strong. At this pace, it has grown at 4.4% quarter on quarter. So the deposits are really strong. On a YY basis, they have lost a bit of market share, but it's better than what analysts did estimate. So they have grown deposits by 9.1% YY and about 4.4% sequentially. Analysts like Motila Loswal was estimating around 85 8.7% growth uh, YY on deposits and about uh, you know 4% on a sequential basis. So the deposit momentum is really strong and currently if you check uh, the rate of interest is higher on the deposit side still they have been able to you know meet the NIA estimates of analyst advances were pretty healthy but lower than analyst estimate it has come in at 15.3 percent uh, YOY and about 2.9 percent sequentially now analysts like Motila Losol was working with a number of three and a half percent growth on uh, credit size so uh, give and take overall good set of numbers that have come in from SBI back to you Thanks so much, Abhishek, for that. We also have Ashutosh Mishra of Ashika Stockbroking joining us on the phone line to react to the numbers. Uh, Ashutosh, you just heard Abhishek uh, you know, give his first take as far as the numbers are concerned. What do you make of the numbers? And even as we speak, uh, LPI has cooled off from the day's highest point. So numbers were absolutely you know, uh, in best in quality on all fronts. If you look from asset quality to business growth to p &L part of it, everything looks quite good for the uh, SBI. What we need to see from here is whatever credit cost guidance for the whole year was they are giving in and what is the stress repetition number for this quarter. If it has come uh, you know, on a sequential basis substantially lower, then surely it will be taken as a more positive. And it was a more positive surprise because uh, market was not expecting you know, uh, such a good number from SBI uh, and no, uh, given that the asset quality concern on unsecured part of it, but although for SBI as well as HDFC, the large uh, private and public sector banks, uh, two largest banks, they are not showing any substantial impact on their p &L because of this concern which is going around you know, impacting some smaller banks. Ashutosh, there was also one account which they did mention that they will classify as NPA uh, in Q2, am I right? Yes. Which was that account and what was the exposure? Can you guide? So, uh, like, uh, I don't have the ready numbers for that part of it, uh, just in front of me. But, uh, you know, uh, in overall scheme of the things, I don't think so that will have any significant impact for the SBI. So it's it's still a better number because your credit cost yes. is declining on a sequential basis despite the fact that you have actually identified stress yeah. and uh, converted into NPA already in the quarter. What do you make of the valuation that SBI is trading right now? So valuation is very attractive and uh, you know, uh, given the scope which we have and especially second half we are going to see a lower OPEX led by the lower employee, employee related expenses. So we are going to see you know, uh, profit remain very strong for the whole year for SBI. And from that perspective, if you know, overall sentiment improves in the market, uh, the stocks can give a very good return from here. I think the main highlight that you can highlight in this result is the deposit growth. Uh, no yeah. matter what, they have on this pace grown at 4.5% sequentially at a time when deposits are actually declining for, you know, large players. They are fighting for deposit with respect to high cost as well. And still, they have been able to meet the analyst expectation on the NIF front. So that's a key takeaway. Other income, yeah. yes, that's helped your operating profits this time around. And they have been helped by uh, lower employee expenses. Uh, do you feel that they need to make the employee expenses especially on the uh, gratuity and other pension uh, going ahead or is that taken care of in this quarter it has taken care of in the last quarter uh, fourth quarter itself so the, the for whole year we are going to see a lower employee related expenses in fy25 compared to fy24 and especially that will play out in bigger way in third and fourth quarter so that's why profitability will be much better for it and as you highlighted uh, in your earlier tweet also that system deposit growth is now picking up compared to credit and i think with the sbi numbers clearly indicating that sbi is the main driver behind it and with the okay. size of sbi surely it is one of the best thing Okay, all right. Uh, Ashutosh, thank you for that. Ms. Vedya, your last take on the numbers before we wrap on this discussion in terms of your rating on the stock and how did you make uh, of the overall numbers now that we have more details? Uh, yeah, so uh, overall it was a strong operational quarter. Um, we currently have a buy on the stock and it remains our uh, most preferred pick in the PSU space. Uh, we have a target of 1030 currently and we'll be with our estimates uh, once the call is done with in the evening. Uh, but it's overall a good set of numbers for from SBI. There, there is an analyst meet at uh, 5 o'clock. Uh, after that, you may revise the numbers. Okay. Bye.
All right. Uh, thank you so much uh, uh, for joining us, Ms. Vedya and Ashutosh. And thank you, Abhishek, for reviewing the numbers uh, today. So that's SBI. We'll keep getting more details on this one once the investor presentation is out as well. For now, we'll sip into a short break. When we come back, we'll get to our conversation with the management of Carousel on the other side. Stay tuned. Welcome back to uh, Midcap Radar. Well, Carousel reported its Q2 earnings. The company's margin softened a bit, but revenue growth remained better. The EBITDA 2 grew 13% on a year-on-year -year basis. To discuss this and the outlook for FI25, we are joined now by Chirag Parikh, the chairman and MD at Carousel. Good afternoon, Mr. Parikh. Thank you so much for joining us and sorry to keep you waiting. Uh, first up, you know, in terms of the quarter gone by, uh, appears to be a bit of a softness as far as margins are concerned, but do you stick uh, to the internal targets it set as far as the volumes are concerned for FI25? Yeah, so I, uh, so first of all, thank you for the opportunity. I think we are quite happy as a company. I think we kind of posted a great performance looking at all the beauty, especially the home, the home improvement market, especially with the challenges, the infl inflation and the high interest cost. Momentum has started to build in. Uh, I uh, what we believe, especially with the change at the end at the US, I think we are, we are, we are uh, based on the last week calls. I think we are already seeing a good uh, momentum with our, uh, you know, with the order booking position. Secondly, uh, we've been able to break through with some major uh, customers, and I think that's going to help us to drive our future growth in the okay. coming. Okay. So you stick to your thousand crore rupees revenue guidance for FI25 because so far in first half you've done around 409 crore rupees, and the margin target of 19 percent, you'll be able to achieve that as well. No, so I would like to, uh, you know, I think. I think the rate what we are going right now, I think we are very confident that we're going to achieve about 100 million, uh, 100 million dollar sales. I had mentioned in my last uh, interview that because of this, uh, the muted demand and all, we have kind of uh, kept our uh, further uh, growth uh, expansion on hold. And that's why we are now watching the market very carefully. I think at the time to come in the coming quarters, I think we're looking at a good momentum and I think then we're going to press our, you know, get for further uh, expansion. But all in good, it looks like we will be clocking 100 million, uh, 100 million dollar sales end of, uh, end of 25. Okay. Uh, so what will the, you know, you had indicated earlier 850 crores would be organic. So there's still some inorganic growth on the cards in this one? Uh, no, unfortunately, we are not trying to look any in, in organic growth opportunities, I think we're going to be pretty much mainly focused on our organic growth. We are expanding our quad sinks. Uh, that's what our plan is. Uh, we are kind of in a brink of uh, pinching some new deals, which is just on the horizon. Uh, we also started our faucet manufacturing and we started our kitchen hoods and the hobs uh, because of the BIS certification. You're not able to import uh, most of the a glass kitchen appliances into India from 1st of January. So I think we pretty much got to stay focused on driving our organic growth. Hmm. Okay, uh, give us a sense of when you expect to reach peak revenues in all of the added capacities. You've mentioned, uh, you know, multiple uh, hurdles you've faced in the quarters gone by. Uh, but as far as the steel things, appliances, as well as faucets business is concerned, when can you reach uh, peak revenue potential? Well, I think we are quite confident moving on to the next year, 25, 26. I think, uh, you know, I think we are quite confident. We're going to post about 15 to 20 percent growth over this year. I think that will that will probably take us to 150, 120 million dollar sales, which would be approximately 1,000 crores. Hmm. Uh, you know, uh, you are talking about you're still in the wait and watch mode for a lot of demand trends that are coming by as well. Earlier, you right. had spoken about a thousand crore revenues. Now it's around hundred million dollars. That would be around eight fifty crore rupees. Uh, what is the idea and the plan of expansion of quads uh, of two lakh units? Are you taking it up again because you had uh, postponed it uh, earlier? Yeah, you know, I think it's a, I think it's a great question. Uh, I think when we had like COVID time, post COVID time, we had such a strong demand and we had a such a traction in our business and then gradually because of the inflation rates uh the interest rate the kind of the home improvement kind of slowed slowed down and now once again we see there's a lot of 
uh, there is a there's all backlog on the homes now, and I think with now uh, 25, 26, and with the cracking with the you know with the new deals with our new uh, clients, I think we should be back in business from 2025, 20, 26, and uh, mm. the new deals which. Uh, Fortunately, I think, uh, you know, India is quite favored right now. The most of our competition comes from Europe and they are facing some very hard challenges with the cost levels. So that is kind of favoring us and would be uh, favoring in future. So I think we see some great deals over the horizon, which we plan to clean by end of the year. And I think that will take us, that will uh, definitely take us to the next level in the 25, 26. Thank you so much, Mr. Parikh, for joining us, you know, giving us a sense of how Q2 was and also giving us some guidance uh, as to how you expect the rest of FI25 to pan out. Uh, well, a couple of stocks on the radar, you know, quite a few of the metal stocks, uh, given the fact that there's not been too much details coming in as far as, you know, the Chinese announcement is concerned, quite a few of the metal stocks have taken a bit of a beating. As you can see, the metal index down over a percent and trading near the day's lowest point. Uh, but that's all the time we have on this edition of Midcap Radar. Your stocks will be returned.